If you hook up with someone like you have said on our other show, if the girl hooks up with you the first night, she's probably not the one you're going to probably wind up marrying, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, <laughs> she probably does that often. <laughs> not, I think that people really need to pay attention to people's behaviors and patterns because if they're doing that with you, they're doing that with other people, right? right. And right. even if they say, oh, this is the first time I ever did that. <laughs> <laughs> are, they, are you saying people lie? <laughs> There's worry. a high chance they're lying. <laughs>to another installment of Iron Therapy. I'm Dave Palumbo, joined as always by our RX Muscle psychotherapist, Leslie Timble. Leslie, we've uh, had a little hiatus since the Olympia. Welcome back. Thanks. It's good to be back, Dave. Yeah. yeah. You, it seems like there's a lot of sun coming through your window. What do you guys have, I, snow there or something? It, well, we do have a little bit of snow. The issue <laughs> is that the condo that I'm in, the blinds are like very sheer, so I can't. Uh, it's hard for me uh, to block it. I thought like, you know, sometimes when it's, I remember when I was in New York and it would snow and then you buy a window and the snow reflects all the light, like right into it does the, that into, too. Yeah. Yeah. The, uh, window though. So how was, uh, how did you enjoy the Olympia watching this year? I'm like, I can't wait till next year because I want to be there in person. It was great <laughs> because RX did such great coverage. Thank you. Thank I you. might be biased, but honestly, I thought they did the best coverage. Thank you very much. I think we did the only real, real, you know, coverage if you think about it i mean who else did coverage there i mean aside from the you know uh, the olympia people themselves you know right like you guys did such a phenomenal job obviously you know sid did an amazing job like yeah. it was just a great effort yeah we we had a good time there I, it was it was fun especially because i was able to drive there it was very relaxing for me it wasn't it was stressful i didn't be on an airplane or anything like that so that always makes it that much more enjoyable you know because when was the last time you were at the Olympia in person, Dave? I think it was 18. I think it was like... 2018. Like, yeah, I think it was... So, so it was 19, 20, 21. 22. So it was like, you know, four years I was gone. So Yeah. It was fun. Time. You know, it's fun going, like I said, because I was able to just drive there. It was kind of... You know, I was able to go to my car in between. I was... If I had to go get... Some, it was... And everything was very close. Like, I didn't have to... I don't... I didn't leave the hotel, you know, premises for the whole Olympia, essentially. I mean... Either I was in the hotel itself or I walked to the expo, which is connected to the hotel. It was a little bit of a walk, but it, it was connected through walkways. So it was not like a difficult thing where I had to get in my car and find parking and, and right. you know, or take a taxi. It was it, The setup there is really nice. I wish they would keep it there, to be honest with you. But <laughs> I know they're going back to Vegas next year and they're going to be holding it at that new hotel. So it, it'll, it'll probably be really nice, I'm sure. Looking forward to it. Yeah. All right. So today's topic, uh, we had uh, our TikTok sensation, uh, men's advice, uh, as I like to say, uh, advocate, uh, Topaz on After Hours two weeks ago, and she was giving some good advice to all the, the guys on there, although, you know, the people on <laughs> After Hours are not your typical human beings. So you felt it would be a good idea if we got her on uh, Iron Therapy to give advice, and I, I know the topic we're going to be talking about today, I believe, is dating for men and women correct yes yeah and uh, the nuances of it and what the right way to do it and it's, it's it's nice i think especially probably most of our audience is men i know we do have women who watch the show but um 
a lot of guys don't really know in this day and age how to actually, you know, get a date <laughs> because it's not like you don't go out and go places anymore. People like are it's all social media and it's 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 like having to sift through, you know, pictures that are not really pictures oh, yes. or you know, fake people. And so hopefully let's bring Topaz in and hope she hopefully she can give us some advice today. Welcome back. Hi, or welcome to the show for the first time. <laughs> thanks for having me. Yeah. Um on after hours, I was honestly it wasn't weird for me because I grew up with guys, so it was just. <laughs> yeah, you were very comfortable. It was actually weirdly comfortable. You were on, on a... <laughs> but the the weird part for me was that it was my first ever podcast ever, so I was just super nervous uh... in that sense, and it was kind of like, like I didn't want to interrupt and be rude or anything of that sort. Yeah, yeah. Which would have been which would have been par for the course for that for that particular podcast, you know. Yeah. Um, and then I wanted to make a joke as you were exiting. Oh. You know how you know what I speak about. I wanted to be like, don't forget to subscribe to my OnlyFans. <laughs> but I, I <laughs> as a joke, as a joke, I don't have an OnlyFans. <laughs> I'm sure, yeah, if you would have said that, you, you would have had like like six thousand people searching for your uh, your only fans page after that. Believe me. But it's I'm like, cool. I don't know if that'll play well. I don't know if they'll know I'm joking. So I'm just no. They won't. Which is probably be even funnier because they're not gonna find anything. So <laughs> yeah. <exactly>. <laughs> but you know, Leslie said you know she wanted to get you on it because she watched the show and she had you know she said I think she's you know got really good insights and uh, I think this is a topic you know a lot of bodybuilders you know think about and you know as a bodybuilder when i was up and coming you know most of our time is spent in the gym and eating you know and and we kind of have what would some people would consider a boring life most bodybuilders i mean there are people that go out and whatever do stuff but most bodybuilders live a pretty you know routine-ish life and you know i think the only place people really interact with each other nowadays and you can tell me if i'm wrong is via like Instagram, TikTok, and all these other like social media, you know, mm -hmm. yeah, things. Yeah. I, I don't know if you really get a good sense of who people are this way, do you? No, um, but you're right. It's it's 100% more swayed towards that. But I think now there's a pushback. And I think men are starting to realize that it's not the best way to meet women, especially on dating apps. Um, because on dating apps, it's only what, like 80%, sorry, 20, about maybe 10 to 20% of men are actually getting matches or getting something out of it. And then the rest of men, if anything, is just ruining their self-esteem because they're not getting, there's so many men that don't get any matches. You is that think? true? I, I mean, I wouldn't know, but I mean, is it, so in other words, you go on a, on a dating site and you like put your profile in and then mm -hmm. how did they determine who matches with who? Well, so basically, um, you put in your information um, and then you you can, it depends. I, there's so many dating sites, but I think typically they're all the same. So you swipe mm -hmm. left or right. I think right is if you like them, left is if you don't like them. And- <laughs> oh, So you actually get ranked by the people who are looking yeah, at your profile. Yeah, exactly. Oh, but the thing is that women are, what they're doing and what men notice is that women are going for the guys that in their profile, they say like six, four, you know? So it doesn't give the normal average guy, the normal, Gotcha. You know, the guy that could be a great guy, a fighting mm -hmm. chance because women right. are all going for the same type of man. So that guy has probably maybe like 200 likes in his right. <laughs> in his um, rotation. And then obviously, you know, because he's getting all this attention, why would he settle with down with one woman? Right. And then they get this whole, um, I guess, perspective of men saying, oh, all men are jerks, but they're not. You're just going for the same guy that isn't giving you the, you know, the reason to go for him. You're just going for him out of, I guess, superficial right. standards. And and a lot of times I, and I, uh, from what I understand, because I've talked to a couple of guys who are on some of these dating sites, which I, I would never go on one of these because I just think it's like completely yeah. phony, but you know, who knows people do, do, do meet each other on here. Um, a lot of the guys on there are just, are, are really not looking for relationships. They're just looking to go on there to hook, hook up with, with girls. Too, I you know? mean, I'm as we've made it as a community, we've made it super easy for a guy to go on a, I don't know, Tinder and yeah. get someone to go over to his place that night. So that's wow. how bad it is. Yeah. That's how bad yeah. it is. I think it's kind of a hookup place. Is it more? Yeah. So than, and and exactly. if you hook up with someone like you have said on our other show, if the girl hooks up with you the first night, she's probably not the one you're going to probably wind up marrying, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, <laughs> she probably does that often. <laughs> not, I think that people really need to pay attention to people's 
behaviors and patterns because if they're doing that with you, they're doing that with other people, right? right. And right. even if they say, oh, this is the first time I ever did that. <laughs> <laughs> are, they, are you saying people lie? <laughs> I don't There's a high chance they're lying. <laughs> I don't believe it. Leslie, yeah. do people actually lie on these things? <laughs> oh my gosh, it's not even just on dating apps. It's just dating, period. Yeah. Yeah. But here's the other thing. There's a high, the, the likelihood, have you heard of incels? Do you know what I mean by incels? No. I've heard that term, but I don't really know. If you can explain it, I don't know so much. Yeah. Give us a, that definition, Leslie. So incels are basically involuntary celibates. So these are especially guys mm -hmm. who want to be physically active and they're not able to because they're not able to hook up with any girls. Why? A lot of it, well, some of it's part of their game. But some of it is because of the choices of women. They go after the, the kind of women who, not just that they go for the, I call it the 666s. So this is a, a ridiculous formula where women want a guy who's six foot or above, who mm -hmm. have six pack abs mm -hmm. who, or earn six figures. That's what I mean by the 666s. Which has nothing to do, Leslie, with, with, with uh, Big Lenny's tan, tan, tens, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a little different than that. Yes. All right, I'm just making sure. <laughs> a little bit different. But yeah, the, people follow these ridiculous formulas. And unfortunately, you know, yeah, there's too many guys out there that are not having sex, period. They're not able to have any proper relationships. And we can talk a little bit more about the is this by, Is this because they don't want to or they physically can't uh, perform? Well, more, not to say that there aren't some, some, you know, some issues with guys that aren't able to perform for a whole bunch of reasons. Some of it's physiological, some yeah. of it's uh, psychological because it has to right. do with, let's say, the dynamic in the relationship. Right. There's a lot. I have a lot of single guy clients. They would love to be in a relationship, not even just to bang a girl, but just to be in a relationship. And they right. can't find a good quality woman, a woman. And why is that? I blame a lot of it. Like, some, obviously, social media is a big part of it but also this feminist movement where mm -hmm. feminists have this thing about, oh, you know, we should be equal. We can have be free, you know, let's not sh shave our armpits and whatever. And if you want to do that, that's fine. But to me, there's a big difference between sexual freedom and having something called self-esteem. You know, it, it's not about th this hookup culture. Okay. And it also depends on the age, you know, if you're in your forties and fifties or whatever, even in, in late 30s and you're doing a hookup culture it's kind of like what kind of quality are you doing and maybe there's something also in the mirror that you got to work on um before i go on that little tangent i want to hear from you topaz what are your thoughts about you know as far as why men can't get laid okay let's, let's start with that one <laughs> Um, I agree with you 100% and I've made videos about feminists and the hypocrisy behind it. Um, I'm definitely anti-feminism and I, I didn't even know growing up that I was anti-feminism. It's just kind of like what was instilled in me and how I grew up. Um, but I definitely agree. I think that these women have made it so that all women have hold themselves to such a high standard that it makes it ridiculous for the average man to have a fighting chance to get into a relationship because all women, what fem, what this modern feminist movement has done is that it's given all women the, meant not all women, of, of course, but it's just, you know, it's advocating for all women to think of themselves as the prize, even if they're not the best quality woman. They want them to think, well, you deserve the best no matter what because you're a woman and you deserve the best and that's the mentality that they're feeding um society so the like let's say a, an average woman won't go for the average man she wants that six figure man she wants that six foot man she wants that one percent man <laughs> uh because that's what's being sold in society so i think that's why there's so many men that don't have a fighting chance and for a relationship or even sex you know like intimacy um and like i said social media is a huge uh, indicator and also the dating apps horrible for that so i think that's the main the main reason uh feminist feminist movement definitely has had a huge impact on that it's inflating women's egos left right and center and it's making them just very i don't like to use this word lightly but narcissistic in a way um that's my opinion personally what would you do you think that, let me ask you a question do you think and this is for both of you do you think that society has basically, you know, this whole, 
we talked about toxic, toxic masculinity. In other words, um, it's almost like, I mean, the feminism in today's day and age is not what it was in the seventies and eighties where people didn't shave their armpits anymore. You know, that, that's really not the view of the feminist. That's where it started. That's where it but started. But I, I almost feel like, like women are made to feel like they, sh they're not allowed to have like a feminine role in a relationship anymore. That it's mm -hmm. that they're they're giving up something or they're not a, being true to who their true character is, and they think that you know they have to be both the man and the you know. The, 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 in other words, they've confused us gender gender identity wise so much so that no one knows how to be themselves anymore. Like a woman can't just be a woman, and the man can't be the man. And I think that's something like that Andrew Tate like talks about a lot. You know, where the man should be a, a certain way and the woman should be a certain way, and there's nothing wrong with that. It's just. Those are the roles, you know, that, that biologically we, we play, but we've made it so, such that if you believe that, that, that there's something wrong with you, that maybe, you know, maybe you're screwed up because you think that a woman should be feminine or act in a certain way. And, and I think it's, it's, it screws up the dynamics of relationships because of that. Yeah, I agree 100%. And that's why I knew I was going to get backlash when I started doing the content that I did. Yeah. Um, but at this point, I don't care. <laughs> Um, because there's just too much, uh, there's too much negativity in terms of trying to pin women against men and trying to make men look as, as if we don't need them. We, we do need men. Yeah. <laughs> men and women need each other. We both complement each other in different ways. Um, and I'm a big advocate for the nuclear family because there's too many single moms and it's destroying oh. society. Like they're oh. growing up without a father that, that makes a big difference in yeah. a child's life. Uh, there's just so many bad things that have come out of this whole feminist movement. And so, yeah, so for me, I, I saw that there was a big issue um, in terms of no one really speaking up for men or thinking that like ever trying to convince everyone that men are bad. So because I grew up with men, I'm, I can see both sides and I, I've seen it firsthand. And so I've seen how women, not all women are angels. Women also do just as bad things as men do. There's so there's this big, you know, confusion that like women are can do no wrong and men are the evil ones. And it's not true. I've seen both sides. I've heard my brother's stories. I've heard their friends stories. I've heard, you know, and growing up around women, I see both sides. So I want to basically bring light to this issue because men are just being I guess taught like we're being taught that men are expendable and they're not. Yeah, and until until someone tries to invade the country and then they want to yeah. they're, 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 they're like, go save us. Exactly. But that that that's the double standard, right? Because we want men to still be men, but only when we tell them to. Right. And that's not okay. It's either you're a feminist a hundred percent or you you know you're not. Yeah, no, it's, it's 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 kind of ironic that yeah, all, all these these uh, feminists out there would be, they want men to act a certain way until until their their uh, security is in jeopardy, and then all of a sudden they want them to be toxic. You know, these masculine men. You know, get the yeah. guns, get the get the weapons, and defend us. You know, the toxic okay, behavior like goes across the board. I mean, it's course, not yeah. just women. Men can be toxic. Oh yeah. So but I mean, it, it's about if we're talking more in generalities and about the new age feminism, it's that I call it a sense of entitlement. Yeah. Just because you're a woman doesn't make you a 10. So let's say your type <laughs> is the 666. Okay, woman, what do you bring to the table? Like, you know what? If, if <laughs> Like, if you want to shoot that high, like, what are you bringing? It's not just what, what the guy brings to you. What do you bring? It Relationship requires more than one person in the ideal yeah. healthy relationship. That's two. So if the guy's one and you're the other, again, pony up. What do you bring to the table? Let, let's all right. So let's assume that there are still some some good women out there and good men out there. Right? Let's, yes. I'm sure, you know we're just talking about some of the radical Extremes, examples. Yes. Yeah. So how do you how does a guy or a woman, in that matter, meet the the person that they're really looking for that they that they would do well with? You know what's in, in today's you know, day and age of like social media. And I mean, where do people go? How do you do it? What's the, the vetting process? Yeah. Um, so actually I went to church the other, I'm actually going to make a video about this. Someone requested this, but I went to church the other day and I realized that, like, I noticed that it was a lot of young people. There was a lot of people mm -hmm. in their twenties, thirties, forties. Like it wasn't just the elderly grandma, grandpas uh, and families. It was not just that it was actually a lot of young people. So I would say if you're religious, you know, go to church um mm. 
but if you're not religious, don't go to church just to meet someone <laughs> because right. then that's not going to work. Um, but if you're religious, go to church because you might meet, uh, you know, friends that might introduce you to a, someone that might be compatible with you, or you might actually meet someone that's compatible with you. You know, you never know. I think that people have to put themselves in situations now um, that fits their lifestyle and their morals and maybe try to meet someone that way. And even if you're not meeting someone that way, you can make friends that way, which meeting someone through friends is actually the best way to meet someone because they're kind of vetted already. Mm. Um, but I would suggest stay off the dating sites. I, I honestly think that all men should delete dating sites because yeah. that, would, that would make it, that would be such a epic move because I think it would really bring women's egos back down and make them realize, okay, we're being ridiculous. You know, right. we, we, need to realize that there are so many good men out there and to give men a fighting chance. So I think all men should delete dating apps. And then that way women aren't going to have all these hundred matches or hundred inboxes in their, <laughs> their, you know, their apps every single day. And it's going to bring a lot of women back down to reality and it's going to force them also to give the, you know, the good guy a chance. Right. Um, so I think like if you're into fitness, you know, don't hit hit on someone at the gym because right. there's too many there's too many women recording at the gym and accusing them of being perverts and things like that. But however, you can maybe try out a class. Um, if you wanted to try out a spin class, uh, maybe go to a spin class. There's tons of girls there. You already know that they they have a healthy habit. They live a healthy lifestyle because they're doing, you know, there's they're doing something like physical right. in the summertime. Go to parks, dog parks. Oh. Um, just mingle. There's also activities that you could join, join a volleyball team. Right. If you know, like things like that are going to bring you together with other people. And even if you don't meet someone that way, you're going to make friends and you're going to network with other people that have the same habits as you and have the same lifestyle as you. And also a huge major part in a relationship is that your values and morals should align. So if you go with based on that and do things that you like, you're likely going to meet someone that is compatible with you rather than swiping left or right on Tinder um, or, you know, messaging someone on Instagram, things like that. Stay away from social media. Don't hit on girls on, don't hit on girls on social media. Um, I would just suggest that men start really being proactive in their life, their lifestyle and trying to kind of mingle in that way. And, you know, th the best things happen when you're not looking. If you make, if you better yourself too, you're going to attract better also. Yeah. Yeah. So. I, think, I think that also for our, you know, population of people who compete and work out, if you go to bodybuilding shows, like in your area, like regional shows, or even if you go to the Olympia, the Arnold, I mean, that's, that's a slightly bigger, but I'm saying if you go to the shows, you're going to meet people who, that's what they like to do. So in other words, like a lot of times bodybuilders will find women that they work out, but they're not, they don't understand the whole competition lifestyle. And sometimes that can create problems because it is, does get kind of weird and selfish when you're, you know, competing, getting ready for a competition. So I always felt like when I was competing, I was always like, I would date people who were competitors or people at least who, who went to shows who understood and kind of liked the whole process because if you don't, it's like you're going to be battling with this person over like your passion for for training and competing, and then they don't really like it that much, and they think you're being selfish because of it. But if they actually do it themselves, sometimes there's a better understanding there. And I'm not saying that. <laughs> unfortunately, sometimes you know when you both stop competing, you have nothing in common anymore. But <laughs> but but for that, if that's what you're doing right now, and for people who are watching this show, a lot of people work out and compete. Um, I think that's not a bad place to meet people e either if you go to competitions and stuff like that on a regular basis because now you're finding people that are into it. And, and women have the same problem. You know, they date a guy who's like maybe a, he's a lawyer or something like that. And he thinks it's cool that his girlfriend is real hot and everything, that, but he doesn't really dig the fact that she's got to go to the gym six times a week and do cardio every day and eat, eat five times a day and she wants to go to a show on the weekends. And so, you know, he might not, you know, get understand that. And so I think sometimes people who – are like-minded to do the same thing will will be more compatible in that sense yeah i completely agree or even if they don't do the same thing if they have similar lifestyles like let's say you know you yeah. can get two completely different professions 
but they have very, very busy lifestyles. Then they get it that they're not that type. They don't, they don't expect calls all mm. the time or texting back and forth where that maybe that's something that another couple or person would want. So right. it's kind of having that understanding too. And just to kind of piggyback what, what you guys have both said, and I like to kind of stay away from social media. I'm not <laughs> sure how realistic that's going to be. Yeah. But rather than putting as much time in social media, even if you can't stop yourself, right. I and this is both for males and females, by the way, I want you guys to more increase your overall attractiveness through self-investment. So similar to what you were saying, Topaz, you know, by building that strong character to increase your value. So you're doing it not just to, for other people, you're building yourself up so you can present something to the table too, but you want to do self-improvement period. This is for you as well as for anyone you meet in your life. And this is not just like any kind of relationship. This could be for people you work for. This mm. could be, let's say, to be a good example for your kids. You want to build character and integrity. How are you going to do that? Well, take responsibility for your life, such as physical health, such as thinking about what do you want your legacy to be? What do you want to be remembered to be? Like, you don't have to be a professional athlete. You could be the best mom in the world. You could be the best, you know, in a trades person in the world. It doesn't matter. Find something that you want people to remember you by. I'm not wishing anyone an early death, but just to say you're here for a reason. If you don't know what that reason is, and I did a video a long time ago about the, the sandwich and what kind of sandwich you want to eat. We can <laughs> talk about that later. But I mean, it's kind of like finding what your legacy is going to be. I also did a, a video recently about how to create a mission statement. It gives you kind of a, a purpose right. in life. Having direction is really important. Um, but also have this self-respect so for women now have you heard of the feral girl summer <laughs> no basically uh females who don't care what anyone thinks about them okay. um, they're very independent but they have very chaotic behavior so they just go with the flow and they always have a good time mm -hmm. to me okay they might say that sexual freedom i would say let's canvas for something called self-respect mm -hmm. so let's get off so, like if you're on only fans and you're caught in that bandwagon <laughs> okay the money okay i get it but you're paying a price for that even though you're getting paid for it your reputation is gone so mm -hmm. any any man who's serious about having a relationship and wants to commit is likely not going to commit to someone on only fans right Absolutely. and i don't even know if she wants to commit with that guy given her <laughs> lifestyle so it's about trying to say how do you increase your value how do you become better how can you make yourself worth more and it's not even just financially yeah and what kind of characteristics do you bring to the table how are you how's your communication is that something you can work on what about helping other people it's not just about you what do you do to actually help other people and i'm not saying you have to do anything big it could be whether picking up some neighborhood garbage like i just read the book uh, by arnold schwarzenegger by the way guys <laughs> useful seven tools all right. This is a great book. Read this I got to check, check it out. Highly recommend it, guys. Highly What's recommend. the most important tool? You know what? I love, well, I think the very first one is a great starter, and that's creating a vision. Right. If you don't have some type of game plan, where are you going? Think of it like right. a GPS. Yeah. But you know, you it's a good difference. But you, and you can adjust your, your, your location accordingly. What were you going to say, yeah. Dave? No, no, I think that's a it's a good point because I think look, let's let's assume you meet someone that you actually think is kind of cool and let's say you actually convince them to go out on a date with you. That's not the hardest part. No. For most for most people that's easy. You know, some people are shy, but it's what do you do after that? You have to make this person interested in you. And and mm -hmm. you know, guys don't understand women are not so into looks as as men are. So they're more into, can you entertain them? Are you, uh, you have a good sense of humor? Are you interesting? You know, something that's going to pique their, their curiosity about maybe I want to find out more about this person. So I think that, you know, people that have interesting lives or do stuff or having interesting hobbies or whatever, now you have something to talk about, you know? Yeah. So I think some people are just like really boring people. Like there are, I know guys that are like really like model like looking guys, but they have no substance because they just don't really, have any interest or anything like that and i'm like i don't even know how these guys could actually like what do you talk about with, with, a, with a woman at that point you know it's like you don't do anything you know, <laughs> you know? Yeah. what are you to talk about yourself about how you know you uh, you model or you <laughs> i mean it, it, it's really not 
you know, it's, it's kind of hard, you know, uh, yeah. to do. Whereas if you have like a background in whether it be biology or you know, your nutrition, or maybe you're a coach and, and, and you get people ready for competitions or, or you're, you know, or you're a lawyer or you're a you know, doctor or whatever you do, whatever you happen to do, you cut lawns, but whatever you do, you're, you're, you have a, a, a skill set. It's something you can interestingly bring up, even if it's you just telling people funny, hey, you know what, I, I, I cut lawns for a living. I own a lawn service. And you would not believe, you know, this this woman's lawn. I mean, it, 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 it's something as stupid as that. And now all of a sudden you got this person laughing and, and now you made a connection. So I think that people think the hardest part is like actually, you know, getting that date or getting that phone number. It's not really. It's, it's how you nurture that relationship after that, that, that really will dictate the success or failure, don't you think? It's funny that you mentioned that, and I agree, um, because the thing is that women do rely more on for the, they rely on the guy to make the conversation and do basically entertain them. Right. And mo a lot of women say, oh, like this guy's so boring. But the problem is that I made a video about this and I said, well, are you giving him anything to work with? Like, you're yeah. not asking him questions. You're not trying to get to know him. Yeah. So that's the thing that I find so funny with this whole feminist mentality, because it's like, you don't want men to lead, but you do want men to lead. <laughs> you yeah. want them to, to do everything. You want them to text you first. You want them to keep the conversation going. You want them to entertain you. And a lot of women, from what I've heard from men, a lot of women don't know how to carry conversation. So like you said, it's very important for a man to have more substance, I guess, because that way he can keep the conversation going. And unfortunately, women do rely on a man to carry the conversation. Not all women, but a lot of women in the dating scene are relying on the man to keep the conversation going and for him to entertain her. So I think that's highly important for a man to have substance um, and hobbies and be interesting. And um, that's the reason that I wanted to be on your show because I think that a lot of the men that follow me would benefit from watching this show because even if they're not into fitness, well, they should be into some type of fitness because it's good for your health. And like Leslie said, it helps you, you know, just level up. It just helps you be not just more physically. Well, it shows that you care about how you look and how you feel and, and, and your health too. I mean, I mean, if, if, if I don't, if I eat, you know, junk food all day long and I don't work out and I don't, I don't give a crap about my health. I mean, that doesn't really send a really good message to the other person about, mm -hmm. you know, about, you know, who you are. I mean, it's one thing to be completely consumed and obsessed with, with, with working out and bodybuilding to the point where it's, it's almost like, oh, this guy, I can't take him anymore because he's, that's all he wants to do. But, but at some point, I think that everyone wants to know that the other person that they're going to go into a relationship with cares enough about themselves to actually not be overweight, you know, look good, well-groomed, you know, do something to keep their health up, right? Because, I mean, you, you're thinking, all right, well, I'm going to be in a relationship with this person long term, you know, I don't want to be with someone who doesn't give a crap about themselves and is going to let themselves just go to shit after once they, they get into a relationship and they don't care anymore. So I think it's important that you have self worth about yourself. Yeah. And it also increases your confidence, right? Yes. So, yeah. but I'm just saying, I mean, I mean, look, Topaz, you're a good looking young woman and you, if you're going to go looking for a guy, you're going to look for a guy who like, who's got like a big belly on himself and drinks beers on the couch and farts and stuff like that that's probably not going to be attractive to you right i mean yeah she's hardly a bodybuilder she's not a bodybuilder she's not competing but she does no. take care of herself you can see i mean she's well groomed that she's she's in good shape and she's not overweight and so i mean you would think that that that's what you'd want to find in, in a part in a partner someone who also values themselves enough and, and yeah. has enough self-respect I'm not saying everyone has to look like they're going to be on the cover of, you know, Vogue magazine, but they should at least, you know, respect themselves enough to to take care of themselves is what I'm saying. No, I agree with you. It is very important. Um, and just for like just overall, too, for their own mental health. Right. When people are going through a hard time, I think the best thing to do is to get into an, a routine where you start working on work, you know, your health, working out. It releases happy hormones. <laughs> um, there's so much benefits to it. I follow this doctor. I don't remember his name, but he posts all the time about how important health is for you and how it can literally, sorry, how important exercise is for you and how it can actually even save your life just to, so he, I think it's James something, Dr. James, have you seen him? He's, um, he's on Instagram, but 
I love his uh, his tweets because he posts so much about health and just how crucial it is for people to take care of their health. Yeah. It's I, I just think, you know, look, I've seen people that were overweight and for most of their life, and they just, you know, they didn't have any self-respect about themselves. And then they just say, you know what? And I've had people contact me as, you know, I want to lose weight, Dave. I want to get back in shape. I want to go to the gym. And they've completely turned themselves around and it's completely changed their whole life, you know, because now they feel good about themselves. They're projecting more confidence. They lost the weight that they never thought they could because they were overweight their whole life. And they're eating healthy. And all of a sudden, their whole life changes, you know, like different opportunities present themselves. They meet someone who's who they never could have met before. And so, you know, sometimes people have this like, oh, I can't meet anyone. But you know what? They don't do anything to, to, to make themselves seem appealing. I mean, you have to you have to maximize your your potential is what mm -hmm. I guess I'm saying. In other words, like I said, not everyone's going to look like Brad Pitt, but it doesn't matter. Like if you're in good shape and you have a good personality and, and you put out good positive energy out there, you're going to attract people like that. And that's that's just a certainty. You know, you attract who you are. You don't attract what you want. You attract who you are. If you want something and you don't or you're not living that that same lifestyle, you're not going to attract that person. You're going to attract the fat, lazy person, you know, that you are, <laughs> even though you say you want the other person. And yeah. that's, that's just the way the world, that's the law of attraction. That's the world we live exactly. in. Exactly. But what I actually wish there was, I wish there was more out there and, you know, whether we talk about this again or do something separately, Topaz, yeah. but, you know, as far as for men, like you said, Dave, it's not just the first date. It's what after that, because when I heard the word men have to entertain women, that triggered something in me. I'm not saying that you did anything saying that wrong. Mm -hmm. because I know that's what a lot of women want to be entertained. I'm mm -hmm. like, men, if you have to like do a dog and pony dance for your woman, that may not be the woman for you. <laughs> like it's just the, yes, you have to be able to bring something to the table as far as some type of communication. And obviously, right. you know, I'm not saying physical health isn't important, but there's no communication for guys. How do you talk to a woman? Or maybe there is, there's not enough talk about that because mm -hmm. part of it is bringing like just having conversation and having the ability to bring up topics uh, and, and feel a little bit more comfortable doing that. I know that that can be a little scary for some people, but it's also what we call in therapy, active listening. Sometimes <laughs> the best thing you can do, guys, is get the, the girl to talk about herself. Not all the time. And in fact, if she dominates the conversation, big red flag. Just <laughs> But it's, you know, guys aren't told because women, we have more of the gift of gab, more or less. And again, this is just generalizations. I'm not saying guys don't know how to communicate. I'm just saying there's a lot of guys out there who don't know, especially the single guys, and they need some help on how to do that. So I would love it maybe another time for us to talk about that. Yeah. So what? Not, give us the top three places for like a person who works out, doesn't have to be a competitive bodybuilder, to meet good quality people? Top three places. Okay. Uh, that's a good question. Um, okay. Like I said, if you're religious <laughs> church or any kind of religious place, it doesn't have to be church. It could be temple. Could any, be yeah. Any type of religious. Whatever, yeah. Um, yeah, exactly. Um, whatever religion you belong to. Um, also don't, don't go to the bars. Don't go to the clubs. <laughs> Never. You're not going to meet your wife there. You're not going to meet your girlfriend there. You're not going to meet your girlfriend on social media and you're not going to meet your girlfriend on dating apps. So just eliminate those things and see how much your life will improve if you start working on yourself also, because your confidence is going to go up because a lot of men are also getting rejected so much on social media and all that stuff, right. And dating apps. Um, so I think once you eliminate that, you're going to be able to maybe make more effort in person. And honestly, just take any chance as an opportunity. But I wouldn't say hit on a girl. I would say just start a casual conversation. If you're at the grocery store and you need help with something, maybe ask ask a woman. And if she keeps the conversation going, then keep the conversation going. But don't go out of your way to do these cheesy pickup lines or hitting on women. Just keep it more casual. And you can make any opportunity an opportunity. Like you can make any place an opportunity, but make sure it's a healthy place. If you want to learn how to cook, to take a cooking class. There's going to be women there that are also learning how to cook. Um, any physical activities, uh, axe throwing, <laughs> mm -hmm. 
go go do like physical activities go do um you know like group activities so yeah i think it's just a matter of putting yourself out there and doing healthy things so not the bar not the clubs not those right. types and the, the gym is not a bad place either i mean i know it could be like <clears throat> it could be you know ridiculous sometimes because yeah. you know everyone's staring at everyone in the gym but you know sometimes you do make a connection in the gym with someone where you just whatever the chemistry is just there and you might start talking to the person because you see them there every day the same exact day and you know that's a that's a, a possibility too i mean i wouldn't yeah. recommend harassing people in the gym <laughs> because you know it, it could be very you know most people are just there to do their thing you know yeah. and uh they don't want to be bothered but you know sometimes you know like i said if, if you're going to the same gym and, and every single time you're there it's the same person is there and you guys start talking and all of a sudden there's a connection that's a possibility too. I mean, yeah. it's a better place to meet people than like you said, a nightclub or, you know, a bar or something like that. Exactly. Whatever suits your lifestyle and everyone that follows you, of course, they're into this type of lifestyle. So yes, uh, as long as the girl's not recording herself or anything, just be, <laughs> be aware of that. If she has a camera and it's recording. Everyone her. requires themselves nowadays. I don't think if you make that a requirement, no one will ever date anyone. No. <laughs> well, if you're at the gym and you see her recording herself a lot, I don't know. But yeah, like you said, but don't hit on don't hit on them. Just casually yeah. speak to them. And then if they want, if you, they'll show you if they're interested. They'll keep the yeah. conversation going. Right, right. Exactly. So, I mean, if it's... It, I always think it's got to be organic, but sometimes yes. I guess, you know, you could just meet someone that just, you know, you always hear the story with these two people meet someplace and it's just, you know, they knew instantly. The guy's like, I knew I was going to marry her the first time I saw her, you know, type of thing. And, uh, you know, it was funny. I was watching uh, the David Beckham uh, documentary on Netflix. I don't know if you guys saw it. It's really good if you, if you haven't yeah, seen yeah. it. And he was, you know, you know, he was playing for Manchester United uh, soccer, you know, thing. They, they were watching TV and the, and the Spice Girls come on. And uh, Victoria, Be you know, Beckham, who's one of the Spice Girls, he's like, I'm going to marry her. Never met her, never talked to her, nothing. And sure enough, he did, you know. <laughs> and all the guys on the soccer team were like, he said it. He said it. He hadn't even, he didn't even know who she was. He never even talked to her for 10 seconds. <laughs> and, for, you know, and they've been still, they're still married to this day. So you never know, I guess. Wow. That, that's more of a weird thing because they're celebrities, you know. Celebrities kind of have like a different... Uh, a different mojo so to speak they can kind of you know pick who they want based on uh based on the fact that they're so popular but i i would have to imagine that that's a much harder marriage to make work because there's so many such strong egos on both sides you know mm -hmm. all right well i want to thank you topaz for joining us again giving us your insights uh, on men and women and dating and uh, leslie uh final words all in all, men and women work way better together in society. Be aware that when there is division, there are there's a reason for it. It's not just the feminist. There's a there's an underlying current there. Don't let that kind of old school rhetoric get involved in your heads. Don't put let, let don't let basically a few bad men skew your entire perception of men in general and same thing for guys with women level up work on yourselves work on your communication be authentic be genuine learn like i said level up you will meet someone organically let's say going to a mastermind or these other kinds of things let it happen don't force it yeah Good, very wise words. Thomas Edison said that, you know, when he was trying to invent the electric light bulb, he, he failed uh, 40,000 times before he actually came up with a light bulb that worked. And he, when they asked him about that, he said, well, I figured out, I just learned 40,000 ways not to make a light bulb before. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so sometimes you got you to gotta make a couple of failures before you actually find the one you really want. And on those words, we're going to wrap up today. I want to thank Topaz for joining us. And Leslie, uh, always a pleasure. I'm Dave Palumbo. We'll see you next time. Take care, guys. Bye.